everybody. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Rising Tide Leadership Podcast. We have a great show in store for you today. So whether you are listening to our podcast or you're watching us on YouTube, we encourage you to download the show notes and follow along if you can. My name is Amber Jordan, and I am here with Dr. Michael David Morales, aka Mo. Mo, how's it going today? Doing well. Thanks uh, for asking. Um, always ready to start talking about leadership, so let's do it. All right. Well, hey, as you know, I recently moved out of the Southern California area, but I have to travel down there every four to six weeks for orthodontist appointments, which I'm not going to go in to that whole story. But let me tell you, there is a leadership and customer service story there for sure. (laughs) But (laughs) we travel down to go to the orthodontist and this one last trip, We were heading down, and so I take the 99 freeway down, and we're headed down, and, you know, the 99 freeway and the 5 freeway, they merge right before you head up the grapevine and kind of head up the hills and down into Southern California. So on our way, I start to see signs that say there's a detour, and we're supposed to take highway something or other, which I've never heard of. And so I start to get nervous because I don't use my GPS because I know where I'm going. So I turn it on and it's not saying anything about a detour or where to go. But we start getting closer and closer and now traffic's getting terrible. We're all backed up and there's this detour. And I'm thinking, I don't know where this is going. I don't know. I don't know where this lets out. I don't know where I'm going to be once I get past it. Um, You know, we've had a lot of detours on trips up and down the five over the years. And so I thought, am I going to end up going the back way to where I need to go? And then I start thinking about all the important things. Are there bathrooms where I'm going? Like, I don't don't know where (laughs) I'm going. That is the important stuff in life. (laughs) Absolutely. And so then I'm thinking, do we stop now? When will we get to stop? And it just, it created all this panic because I didn't know where I was going. And I didn't know what was going to happen along the way. Well, we finally get to where we're able to get off and we take this highway. And right when we get on the highway, now, mind you, this was an hour and a half delay. But right when we get off this highway, my GPS starts working and it shows that we're taking less than a mile this highway road that connects from the 99 to the five, exactly where we needed to connect just a couple miles earlier. We connect, we're on our way, everything was smooth sailing and it was exactly as it should be. But it got (laughs) me thinking, you know, it got me thinking about leadership and, and, you know, the idea of where we're going and how we're getting there. And if we don't know where we're going and then we don't know where we're at or what's happening. It reminded me of this quote by Stephen Covey that says, Um, to begin with the end in mind means to start with a clear understanding of your destination. It means to know where you're going so that you better understand where you are now and so that the steps you take are always in the right direction. And isn't that so true of leadership? Wow, Uh, it really is. And I'm glad that you finally got down here. I know that's not always a fun drive and you know, getting the kids down for those appointments is important uh, because, you know, they want to have those million dollar smiles as my, <laughs> uh, one of my teachers told me uh, earlier on in life when I used to have braces. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, Eleanor Roosevelt uh, once said that life is like a parachute, right? You have to get it right the first time because <laughs> if you don't, uh, it's going to be splat, right? And so if you want to be an effective leader, because that's what we're talking about today, someone who influences others for multiple generations, not just here, you have to do the same thing. You have to start intentionally knowing what you want to do and where you want to go. Otherwise, you might not have that parachute packed up the way it's supposed to, and you don't want to jump out of that plane (laughs) until you know that you have a right. And so everybody is going to leave a legacy. And so that's really what we're talking about today. And the legacy that you leave depends on what you do and how you do it. And so today we want to talk about for our listeners what it means to leave a positive legacy, one that you can really be proud of. Yeah, that's great. So I'm going to be taking notes along with our listeners. So why don't you (laughs) tell us what is the first point for today? Yeah, the the first point is this, and it's really simple. And it's this, define your legacy. That's it. You got to define the legacy because if you don't say what you want to do, if you don't start with the end in mind, well, then you're not going to really have anything to go off of, right? And so as a leader, you have complete control over the productivity of your life. 
And you might not be able to take control of all your circumstances, right? Because circumstances come at us. But as one of my mentors always says to me, you can take control of your attitude. And so when you have the attitude to turn these circumstances into something good and positive, it's really going to help you affect that outcome. But you need to know what kind of outcome you're going for. That way, you know, if you're kind of like winning or, or losing uh, and it's not about, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm losing. So things are horrible. It's like, well, am I, am I getting closer to what I want to achieve or am I getting further from it? And so the question is, what kind of legacy do you want to leave? You know, um, if your life was a book, um, then the question would be, where are you in that book? Because at the end of your life, people are going to be able to look back and kind of read through that, right? And so I'm not trying to be morbid or anything. I'm just trying to, to be practical and realistic. So, you know, if, if we are in that process of writing our own book, what chapter are you in? What are the things that, you know, uh, have been the protagonists in, in your life? And we're, we're kind of always kind of our, our own protagonists, right? But, you know, what do you want to be remembered for? Yeah, it reminds me of a book I read several years back by Donald Miller called um, A Million Miles in a Thousand Years. And it's basically this idea of he was successful by kind of anyone's standards, but he was unfulfilled. And so he started looking at himself and his life of like, hey, if my life were a movie and I'm the main character how do I want the story to end? How do I want to be remembered? And then what are the things that I need to do in my life now that tells a really good story? And that's that's a really good way to look at it. And just like Donald, Donald Miller, we have to understand our own vision. And so th there's a lot that goes into it for him. He was a successful person by, like you said, by anybody's standards, they would have said, man, that guy He's successful, but for him, he just didn't feel it. And so you have to ask yourself, okay, you know, what is it that I want to do? What is it that I want to be known for? You really have to hone it in and bring clarity to that vision so that you know what you're working towards. Because, you know, um, your, your personal legacy is going to be more than just a statement, but you have to start with a statement because you're going to enrich the lives of others. If you're in leadership, right? And you have to be willing to enrich your life right now so that you can maybe one day help other people. And so what reveals you to your core being? You know, what's your life all about in terms of family, friends, those in your sphere of influence? Because the more specific that you can be, the better. What are the things that matter to you in life? What are you passionate about? What are the things that make you authentic? What are the things that make you feel true to yourself? Because no matter where you are, you can start to live within that legacy. And so let, let's talk about the professional life for just a minute, right? Since we're talking about leaders and we're going to be um, helping people at our work and extracurricular activities and all those things, right? So, so for the, your professional self, whether you're at the beginning of your career or you're in the middle or you're even getting ready to retire, which if that's the case, I totally envy you. <laughs> you can make an impact in your job. And I mentioned earlier in, in another podcast um, that Sigmund Freud once said that one of the main drivers in life is for us to feel important. We all want to feel important. All of us want to be significant. We want to make a difference. And so how does that look like for you in your current situation at work? You see, if you don't feel confident that you can break down your desired legacy into one sentence even, my encouragement is that you really take some time to do that. In fact, that, that's what I do with people on a daily basis. We figure out where they want to go, and then what is it going to take to get there? And then we start writing down the things that they want to get done for their desired legacy. And then once, you, once we can help them do that, then we set those people up to help other people jump on board to that vision and then create their own visions. And then that's when it gets fun because now everybody is starting to make an impact on others around them. Yeah, and I know one of the things that you do in, in part of that process is helping people um, identify and define their core values. So how important are the core values to creating that legacy statement? Oh, gosh, I mean you know how long it took for you, you and I, as we sat down and we talked about core values, core principles, the things that you believed. And you would tell me, Mo, I believe in this. And I'd say, yeah, but do you, is it one of your top five? And then you're like, well, yes. And then we, we, we whittled it down. And then I said, okay, now what are your top three? And you're like, I, I just gave you my five, right? Well, we all go through that process. In fact, I take 
companies through that same process because sometimes we get lost in the sauce, as I like to say. it. We're, we're so busy trying to get things done that we forget about that. And so it doesn't matter where you are in your organization, you can make an impact to leave that legacy. In fact, even at your job now, when you're about to leave, what is the legacy that you are going to leave? Is it going to be on good terms? Hopefully, um, as you move up and, and, and move to, to, to different and better and greater things, every time that you move, move out of a place and into another, you have the chance to impact others. And so my question is, how are you going to leave others better for having known you? Yeah. And man, it's just such an important question to really think about because I, sometimes I think we get into leadership thinking about ourselves and what we want to do. And I, I know just really having the emphasis on others is, is just really helpful. And so the first thing we have to do is define our, your legacy statement. What's the second thing we need to do? The second thing that you do after you define what it's going to be is you need to live your legacy. You got to start living it now. In fact, uh, Lewis Carroll, who is um, the author of Alice in Wonderland, once said, if you don't know where you're going, then any road can take you there. <laughs> and I really love that. It is kind of indicative of, 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 of that entire work and, and what, what life was all about for maybe Alice in Wonderland because things are just totally crazy, right? But you don't want your life to be like that. You want to know kind of where you're going. Not everything, but you have to have at least a direction. And so what are you going for? Because as leaders, we want to be people of influence. You've got to ingrain that word in your head. You really have to know where you're going to be an influencer if you want to live out that legacy. And it's important that you live it out right now. I'm talking about today. You need to do it now because there's no time like the present to get moving. Well, Mo, what do I do? You need to add value to people today. You need to influence people today. I talked to so many people who wish they would have done things differently. Mo, I really wish I would have done these things differently for X amount of months or years or whatever. And the fun part is I tell people, look, don't worry about where you were. We're, We want to talk about where you're going. And if we can define what the legacy is going to be, it doesn't matter what the past was because we're going to start living that out today. And it might seem a little bit cl- cliche, but it's true because the only way that you can develop a legacy is by building credibility as a leader. I mean, that's it. That's why we talk about trust being the foundation of leadership all the time. That's what we talk about at Rising Tide. How are we going to help people as individuals and companies understand that that, that trust is the foundation of what they need to do for their company? You know, what, 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 what are the things that you need to be intentional about? How are you living out your legacy today? What are you doing to be a better leader? Because you need to make sure that people are a part of that legacy. I mean, again, right? You can't be a leader without people, right? And the way you do that is to become an attractive leader. People need to want to be around you. Nobody wants to be around somebody or follow somebody who doesn't know what he or she is doing, right? I mean, you, you, want, you want people who are confident in where they're going And they want to latch on to you saying, man, I think that this person can get me where I'm going. And so it's time to start walking the walk and not just talking the talk, right? (laughs) For another cliche. Where do you want to influence people? Nobody wants to hear you talk about big things. They want to see you do big things and then they're going to, they're going to come alongside you. And that's why sometimes to get somebody to follow you and to be a part of your sphere of influence, you have to actually show them what you're going to do and actually do it. And I know that can be frustrating because sometimes you feel like you're alone and leaders, sometimes you just got to get out there. It's not about necessarily being a demonstrator, but you do have to demonstrate so that people will come alongside you because people are, we're all naturally pretty skeptical, right? We're just like, well, does this person really care about me? Does she really want me to come alongside her? Does this guy really believe in me? Yes. You need to help them understand that because they want to believe in you but it's just difficult to really wrap your head around those things sometimes. So give your people a little bit of a break. (laughs) Yeah, I I think this actually might be where maybe a big charismatic leader might get tripped up because they have such a keen ability to get people excited about doing things, but maybe not as good. It it doesn't come as easy to get them actually moving. Would you say that that's true? Absolutely. And, and I know for me, I mean, I've always wanted to be an influencer. 
you know, and some people have, have grown up the same way and some people have it. And, and you're somewhere on that spectrum. And for me, I, I really didn't even know though what that meant to be an influencer. And then all of a sudden I was introduced to a guy named Kevin, who was one of the first mentors that came alongside of me and said, Mo, there's something in you. You care about people. You want to add value to people. And he started saying these things and I'm like, well, that rings true. And yeah, I do feel like that. He, he didn't tell me anything that I didn't already know. He just helped me put it into words. And so when I talked with him and he helped me create that vision and put it into words, everything started to make sense. And it was almost like, man, a light bulb went on. And it was a simplification of the process. There's that word again, right? <laughs> and all these things were, were, were now being lived out inside of me and I can actually see them and put my finger on them. And so people started saying, Mo, what are you about? And I could actually tell them what I was doing. I, I just didn't know how to articulate it for so long because when you're an influential person, right, it's all about leadership. I just didn't know that. It, it wasn't automatic for me and it, it probably isn't automatic for you either. And who are the people that are helping you understand that? Because if you're listening to this podcast, leadership is definitely on your radar. And man, we're so glad that you're here. But what does it take to start working that out to be even more influential in the lives of other people? Because that's what leadership is all about. Your legacy, the one that you walk out today on a daily basis has to include people and they need to see how powerful it is. That's what leaders do. Yeah, and I would just say to our listeners, if you don't have someone like Kevin in your life or someone that isn't there necessarily that can look from the outside and point the things out that they already see in you, but help guide you, then I would really encourage you to find coaching services like the ones here at Rising Tide, because we all need that outside perspective. We all need those people that can see the things that we don't in us and the things that are coming ahead of us. So Mo, number one was define your legacy. Number two is live your legacy. And what is the third and final thing that we need to know today? Yeah, the third one is great. It's impart your legacy. And that's what you just mentioned about what Kevin did, did with me. He had what, what I call the 30,000 foot view in my life. He, he wasn't in the picture um, necessarily, but he was kind of flying above and helping me navigate stuff. And so he was someone who imparted his le part of his legacy on me. And so leaders, what are you doing to impart your legacy? Because this is really where the rubber meets the road for leaders. <laughs> the, the things that you do every day can't be on your own. It has to involve influencing others. And that's the essence of leadership. So how are you going to bring others along on your journey? And if you already are, how are you? Write that down. What are you good at? In fact, Max Dupree, who's um, the author of Leadership is an Art, and that's one of the, the, the top 50 uh, books, right? Says this, succession is one of the key responsibilities of leadership. And so if it's one of the, the, the key responsibilities, who are you helping for that succession piece? <laughs> who are you picking to help take up that mantle of leadership? What are you doing to help others understand what you are doing so that when you're gone from a company, and it might even be, hey, I'm only at this company for a year and I'm gonna leave, you're still leaving a legacy. And like Maxwell says, you know, the, the legacy should live on after you're gone. It should, it, it, if it, you can, find out how, how successful you were in a company. Whereas if you leave and a year later, people are still realizing the things that you implemented, that's when you can see that's the legacy. So who are the people right now in your company that you are entrusting your legacy to? to? Another great book, again on the top 50, is uh, by Sam Walton, founder of Walmart. And he wrote uh, his great autobiography called Made in America. And again, man, you have got to read that book. Talk about somebody with vision. He was crystal clear and he was laser focused on his understanding of what he wanted to do and create and what he wanted to do for his legacy. In fact, a lot of people uh, point out that even his kids now, and he's got several of them are still, even though they divvied up all of the wealth, they're still in the top wealthiest people. That's how much impact that he made financially and not just financially because he gave a service and products, right? I mean, we've all gone to Walmart. You probably have the app on your phone, right? <laughs> but you've got to read this book. Because it's not about money for Sam Walton. It was about changing people's lives. It was about something deeper. It was, it was about giving to others what they didn't already have. And I mean, wow, it, he pretty much created something that wasn't even there. 
And I expect every leader out there to dream just as big because, you know, you, you, you may not be getting ready to make the next Walmart. You might. And if you do, give me a call. I'd love to know you. <laughs> but what are your goals? What are the things that are on your radar? And your goals should be big. They should be bigger than you. Because just like Sam Walton, um, he, he wasn't able to just do this on his own. He had to bring people along. And then he passed on his company. And the legacy continued long after he's now passed away. And so remember, legacy doesn't live in things. Legacy lives in people. <laughs> and so in Sam Walton's case, Walmart um, net it was never one generation from being completely changed, right? And so, of course, it'll never be exactly the same as when he had it. And now we can kind of take up that mantle and try to try to live out his legacy. And, you know, it's been doing pretty good since, uh, since he's been gone, right? But what do you want to do when you're gone? How do you want people to live out that legacy? Because you've got to be focused. And I'll say this, you need to be focused on your legacy and be thinking, how do I want to be remembered? Not because it's, it's you know, something that's, oh, it's all about me, but more because you want to be able to affect people and influence people long after you're gone. And so the, the cool thing is that with the men and women that, that, that I've spent with in my life, they've expected me to carry on that mantle of leadership. And I've done my best to do that. Amber, I know you do the same thing. And listeners out there, leaders, I expect the same from you. So the question is, who are the men and women in your life who are teaching you on a daily basis to take on part of their mantle of leadership? And if you don't have a crystal clear focus, you can go all the way back to the first point <laughs> and learn how to define the legacy and make it as easy as possible to help other leaders understand because they want to trust you. And then you can speak into their lives because of the people who have spoken into your life. Yeah. And you know, man, I, I would caution our listeners too, not to jump straight to number three, that impart your legacy. <laughs> I mean, we're so tempted to do that, right? Because like you said earlier, we, we want to be important and we want to do important things and we want to impart things to other people. But man, without the number one and number two, the defining it and living it, we don't really have much to impart. And so as important as all three are, man, we got to start with number one. We got to move on to number two. And then I think once we're really living it, we naturally will find that we're imparting it even even in ways that we didn't realize, but then we get to be really intentional about it, which is super cool. Like that's the fun part of leadership and working with people. So Mo, before we go today, what are your final thoughts for us? Yeah, Amber, I really like what you just said. It's all about the process, right? <laughs> Don't jump to number three because if you're like we me or Amber- can't get away from the process no matter you, how hard I try. <laughs> the shortcut to the process is the process, the process. right? <laughs> Amber, how many times have you heard that, right? <laughs> so million. people, th th there's a book out there that you need to read. And it, again, it's on the top 50 list. And it's, it's called Shackleton's Way. And it's about uh, the leadership lessons that, that he learned as an explorer. And towards the end of the book, there's a chapter where he talks about what it meant for him to leave a legacy and really how you can apply those principles to your life. So pick that up because, you know, I, I won't give away the, the story, but let's just say that if it wasn't for Shackleton, all of the guys that was on his, uh, on his ship and the voyage that they were taking, they, they, they would have all been dead. <laughs> and the Endurance, which was the name of his ship, um, and, and all those crewmen, they would always think what who they called him the big boss um, because he saved their lives on more than one occasion. And that is part of his legacy. And even long after they, they were done, they would talk about that. And they've all written books now. And they all talk about how Shackleton helped them take up his mantle of leadership. And so leaders, you know, what kind of leader do you want to be? My hope for you is that you would want to be a legacy type leader. And you know what? We're behind you and we'll do whatever we can to help you get there. Absolutely. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode. Again, thank you everyone for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time.